I mean, uh, you should, uh, yeah, you should talk to Max more about that. You know, he, he's a good friend of mine who's recently become uh, CEO of Alcor. So, yeah, which I, yeah, I might do is that. It's a good, a good step for Alcor because Max is a very kind of a uh, very intelligent and very responsible, Driven. sensible, straightforward oh. guy, as well as a broad transhumanist visionary. So I think that, that was a very good hire for him. Now he has a different view of how the singularity will occur to some. He has a, a sort of like a slow, steady, not slow, but a continuing like uh, thrust upwards into a singularity. Um, but um, a lot of people, including myself, think that once an intelligence explosion happens, it will be very quick. The upshot will be very quick, at least until we reach some sort of asymptote. But you know, there will be a big difference before and after the singularity. It won't be necessarily smooth. Um, what's your view? Yeah, on that? I think Max. Max does consider it more likely there will be what he calls a surge, rather than a singularity. So an ongoing steady growth rather than a sudden spike, nearly infinite spike, as, as Damien Broderick called it, or yep, the singularity as, as Vinci and uh, Kurzweil called it. Yeah, I, I mean. Yeah, D Damien's Australian, although he, he lives in the U.S. He does uh, now, yeah. Unfortunately, we lost him. He's still a, a visiting... I think he's still a fellow with Melbourne Uni, so it would be great to get him down to Australia one day to speak at the summit. would really be good. I know a lot of people would be very interested in hearing from him or seeing him. But um, about this... So, the nature of the, the spike, I mean... The idea of a singularity is um, after a certain point, it's very hard to tell what will be after. It's like a, an event arising in a black hole. Yeah, see, I think Max, Max focuses more on human enhancement hmm. and brain-computer interfacing, whereas I'm focused more on the possibility of creating non-human minds, which we might then interface with, but where yeah. the kind of the crux of their intelligence is not the human brain and I think that that underlies our different estimates of the rapidity of technological change because if if all the change is happening within the scope of the human brain and mind architecture indeed there's a limit to how fast you could change and still remain human mm. Whereas if you throw out that constraint and say, well, how fast could the non-human mind change if it doesn't mind revolutionizing its brain structure every five minutes, you know, then more rapid rates of change become feasible. Mm. Now, I, mean... I, I, I don't feel like Max has really taken the possibility of near-term development of transhuman AGI all that seriously and although we know each other fairly well because of our common involvement in, in Humanity Plus, the nonprofit, we haven't uh, dug into the issue of how fast could AGI develop together really so I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure exactly where his his thinking lies about the speed with which AGI might develop because I, I think he he probably would agree that once you have AGI at a slightly more than human level separate from human beings a uh, Vengean singularity is, is is likely mm. I, I guess he, he just he doesn't share my optimism that Creating AGI of that of that sort may be more rapid than enhancing the human brain. Yeah, that's right. Um, actually, talking about H plus, there is a conference in Australia. Um, no, on it's, the it's H 20... plus here. It's only it's only H plus there. Oh, it's Humanity Plus, but I just speak in acronyms where I can. No, humanity no, no, Plus. No, I, I I haven't heard anyone say H in a while. H? Oh, you call it H? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just put an eight, an H in front of the H, so it sounds like it begins with the letter that you're actually talking.
talking about. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Australians always do that. Yeah, so. yes. Backward people we are. Down under, man. We've <laughs> all resulted from convicts being all stuffed into one country. Look at us now. Convicts, Rag tags. convicts mating with kangaroos. That's right. Yes, that's yeah. right. And wombats and koalas. Yeah. I don't know which one I'm related to, but <laughs> I say a wombat. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, H Plus Summit in Australia on the 25th, 25th and 26th of June. First one great. in the That's Southern great. Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Hugo actually might be able to make it to speak at that. It's just uh, he's trying to work out the, the plane flights out of the US for this um, documentary which is on at the moment. Um, do you know anything about that documentary? That he's Hugo doing. knows more. I'm, I'm not certain at this point if I'll be featured in it or not. I think I'm, I may be. Huh? <laughs> I've talked to the producers a bit. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, y- Hugo is really focusing a lot of time on uh, on publicizing his view of the future in, in the media mm-hmm. as, as, as well as on researching advanced physics and topological quantum computing mm. and, and femtotech and and so forth so he's right. he's really pushing hard with these various writers and documentary producers and so forth to yeah. to, to get them to to spread these ideas to the general public yeah that's true well um yeah so and on that topic you're coming to australia to speak at the yeah, I haven't, I haven't been back there since 2005, so it's, uh, okay. it's good to be back. Exciting, yeah. yeah. So um, that'll be in August the, 20, the 20th and the 21st, and it's part of National Science Week in Melbourne. So, um, yeah, that should be really good. Got um, David Chalmers as well. <sighs> <laughs> um, now you, 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 you're not putting me to sleep. I was just up too late last night. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So um, we've spoken about AGI, but um, now why would we build AGI? I mean, do Homo sapiens have the intelligence and wisdom to sort of chart a future and monitor the and manage various levels of complexity well, and technology to me, and environment asking why we by would ourselves? Is almost, it, it's almost irrelevant because we're going to. So I mean, it, it, it's kind of an uninteresting question to me. I mean, if if you decide there's no good reason to make an AGI then some other guy is going to make an AGI somewhere else. I mean, th- there's there's a long history of simpler forms mm. generating more and more complex forms. And yeah. some, some dead ends... Well, I've occur. heard a lot of people dog, say, dog. well, why, why build AGI when we've got all these humans about? It's not something I subscribe to, but, like, I've heard various people say all we need to do is just go out and have sex and like you know 18 years later you've got somebody who's a functionally um appropriate intelligence with all the robotics behind it it can um interact with the world it can think generally and i guess that's the current mindset just you know population can um help i provide. think that that's the current mindset because people only believe what they see in front of them and they don't know how to build an agi and uh, i think that as soon as the viability of building agi is demonstrated then everyone who has research or engineering money available will be incredibly enthused about building agis and part of the reason is that a lot of the things we spend our time on as human beings are, are, are pretty damn annoying. I mean, I mean, you and I have, have relatively easy and, and pleasant lives, but I mean, if you, if you look at people working in, in factories or subsistence farming and, and so forth, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people spending a lot of time doing a lot of, of unpleasant and unsatisfying things. And you, you, even for those of us who have relatively fortunate lives, I mean, what if you didn't have to spend time fixing IT problems in your computer or cleaning out your toilet, for for example? I mean, or or doing tax paperwork. I mean, I think there's incredible opportunity to improve human life. Not even getting into the kind of intrinsic psychological difficulties of, of being human. I mean, the the human condition is is not that wonderful that the, there are, are certainly many beautiful moments and and great things about life but there's also a lot of stress a, a lot of 
tedious times and a lot of unhappiness. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't think that the current human condition is, is some kind of, of perfection to be no. exalted and that, that it, it couldn't be improved upon. I, I think that's, yeah, that's kind of a, a delusional system that some people can make up because people can get used to anything. You know, if, if you put prisoners in a prison for a long time, then you release them into the outside world. They don't know what to do. Half the time they commit a crime to get back in prison, which is where they're comfortable, you know? And in a sense, all of us humans have gotten used to the, the prison of our human bodies and our, our human brains and our habitual human ways of, of thinking. So that when there's a possibility of freedom from the, the prison of our humanity, we're afraid of that, and we're like, no, I'd, I'd rather stay in jail where everything's nice and comfortable and I understand it all, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that, that, that's just the way we are. We get, we get habituated. And nevertheless, you know, if you took that prisoner in jail and instead of offering him a, a crappy room in a boarding house and a job at McDonald's, you know, if if you offer them a nice island to live on with a, with, with a beautiful girlfriend and all the food they could eat and the pool to swim in, all those prisoners would leave the prison, you know, and, mm -hmm. and they would become comfortable and, and adapt. So I, mm -hmm. I think there's that possibility there to step out of the prison of our humanity into something that's amazingly more rewarding along, along so many dimensions. And that's, that's certainly one reason why. You know, it's not just about better gadgets. It's about better and broader experience and be be better ways of of being. Mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, if if you look mm -hmm. at the very crux of what it is to be human, you find a lot of illusory things that don't bring that much happiness. I mean, you you find the illusion of free will, which where we feel like we are willing ourselves to do things, yet there's so much laboratory data showing that most of the time we feel like we have free will. We don't. The decision was already made by our unconscious brain dynamics. Then mm. you have the whole self model, the feeling of what it is to be Ben Goetzel or, or Adam Ford, which is it's largely a story that the brain makes up in order to make its life easier. and all these aspects of the human mind are kind of strategies that the brain took to survive in evolution. And more and more as civilization develops, they, they become more and more convoluted and, and troublesome. You know, One of my favorite books is by Sigmund Freud. It's uh, Civilization and Its Discontents. And what Freud argues in that book is that when we were kind of happy savages, living in the Stone Age lifestyle, we were relatively happy. And mm -hmm. when we were unhappy, it was because something bad was happening at that moment, right? Mm -hmm. And then when nothing bad was happening, we were happy because life is good, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at Stone Age societies, that exist now pretty much bears that out. But those people are really happy, except when they're dying of malaria or some disease or they're starving because there's a drought or something that they don't have the sophistication to deal with. But they're mm -hmm. happy people. Now, we've developed civilization and written language and mathematics, which means we have the ability to be unhappy even when there's nothing in our immediate surroundings to be unhappy about, right? Yeah. And, yeah, I feel like this is a transitional phase, like we evolved for a kind of Stone Age tribal existence when we were reasonably happy. Mm. We invented civilization, which causes a lot of complexity and trouble and a lot of interesting, wonderful stuff. I mean, I don't want to go back to being a caveman and, and also <laughs> causes a lot of, of suffering. But fortunately, it's a temporary phase. We can go on and create a kind of post-civilization or trans-civilization where we're no longer in this awkward situation of being stuck with brains that are evolved for one thing and having to live in a different thing, right?